In this video, we will review over the anatomy of the common lake lamprey or sea lamprey, Petromycin marinus. The lamprey is in the kingdom Animalia, phylum chordata, subphylum vertebrata, superclass Agnatha. The lamprey has all four characteristics found in the phylum chordata, including the notochord. The notochord will uh, eventually become the uh, cartilage area within the vertebrae column, the dorsal hollow nerve cord, the pharyngeal gill slits, and the postanal tail. The lamprey exhibits bilateral symmetry. It has uh, all of the directional terms associated with it that we would see in other higher vertebrates, including anterior, which would be towards the head, posterior, which would be towards the tail region, dorsal, which would be the back side, and ventral, which would be the belly side. The lamprey belongs to the superclass Agnatha. This class consists of vertebrate animals that lack a defined jaw. It is this lacking that jaw that is perhaps the most defining characteristic of the lamprey. The lamprey possess an eel-like body, they lack the jaws, but they have teeth and they contain a round mouth. There are over 41 different species of lampreys. They have a worldwide distribution in both the marine and the freshwater environment. The lampreys have a high degree of cephalization, and we can see this through the rudimentary brain that's connected to the spinal cord. The skeleton of the lamprey consists of cartilage rather than bone, and the lamprey's life cycle consists of two major stages, the larvae stage and the adult stage. The larvae stage can last for years, and when the lamprey is in the larvae stage, it is referred to as an amocyte. The adult body form only lasts for a matter of months. Now the lamprey that we will be studying in biology class is the sea lamprey, Petromycin marinus. The sea lamprey can grow to a maximum length of 2.8 feet and can weigh up to 13 ounces. It is indigenous to North America and to the coast of Europe and North America, but um, as far as the Great Lakes are concerned, it was originally introduced to the Great Lakes through the construction of the Welland Canal, which was built around 1829 as a means of bypassing Niagara Falls. The problem that arises with the sea lamprey is that the lamprey attaches to fish using its sectorial mouth and horned teeth. It then creates an open wound by scraping at the scales and the skin of the fish using its raspy tongue. The blood and body fluid that are uh, released are then ingested by the lamprey and the fish's blood is prevented from clotting due to a powerful anticoagulant that's found in the lamprey's uh, saliva. If a fish survives being fed upon by the lamprey, then it's likely it'll repeat this order over and over as the lamprey have become uh, very problematic in certain areas. As a result, um, various mechanisms have been put in place to control the lamprey, and it's for this reason that most of the dissected organisms that are used in biology class will be the females. The males' uh, lampreys are typically captured, sterilized, and released to help cut down on uh, the lamprey population. Now as we begin to view over the external features of the adult lamprey, we can first see the head region. The head region contains the major sensory and nervous organs, including the brain. We have the eyes. The trunk area is located right along here, and it makes up the bulk of the body. It contains the major structures of uh, the various systems, such as the circulatory system, the digestive system, the reproductive system, etc. Then we have the tail region. We can see the external gill slits right across here. The lamprey has seven distinct external gill slits which extract oxygen from the water. The buccal funnel is located in this area. It surrounds and supports the oral disc which is where the mouth is located. Buccal papilla are also uh, located in this area. These are the finger-like projections that surround the buccal funnel. The oral disc is what supports the funnel of the adult lamprey and it's made up of, of cartilage rings. We can see the caudal fin and the anterior fin and the posterior dorsal fin. 
Um, right along here, we can see the lateral line system. It consists of lines of pores that sense the water currents, water pressure changements, movements, vibrations in the water, etc. Um, up in this top area, right up in there, will be the pineal organ, and it's located under the skin, just posterior to the medial nose. Uh, and this right here is the equivalent of a third eye, and its uh, role is believed to perceive light and dark. It also will play a role in triggering each of the stages of the lamprey's life cycle. The lamprey has horned teeth arranged in concentric rolls within the buccal funnel, and the mouth is designed as, the, uh, as just a, a uh, reflection of the parasitic lifestyle that the adult lamprey lives. Additionally, we look right back in this back area and we will see the rough tongue and this tongue uh, is used to rasp away the flesh of the fish in order to feed upon the blood that it creates from the wound. And now as we begin to look at the internal structures of the um, lamprey, again we can see those horned um, teeth associated with the mouth. We can see the, the papilla. Right here we can see that raspy tongue. We see the pharynx so we could have the, the food coming back and, and following through that alimentary canal. Here we have the olfactory sac associated with that median um, nostril. Now it has a single dorsal median nostril associated with the olfactory sac and this allows for the lamprey to scent different particles and, and can detect scents from great distances. Continuing to move posterior, we can see that rudimentary brain that is formed. We can see the notochord that would be located right in this area. The seven uh, gill slits would open up into the gills. The gills are feathery. It does increase the surface area for removing oxygen from the, uh, the water. We can see the, the liver associated right in this area. This would be the chamber where the heart would be located. We can see the esophagus. And then we can see these zigzag structures, which are the myotomes. And these are longitudinal bundles of muscle. And while the uh, lamprey swims, the myotomes will alternate. They will expand and contract back and forth. And this allows for the movement. And it's this arranged in a zigzag pattern that gives the, the lamprey those powerful back and forth motions that are associated with the tail to propel the, uh, the lamprey forward. Now if we were to continue backwards, we would see that the esophagus would open up into the intestines. Unlike uh, uh, most other vertebrates, the um, adult lamprey lacks a stomach so that the esophagus opens directly into the intestines. And so the intestines will receive bile from the gallbladder and uh, the intestines is where the food is emulsified, digestion and absorption occurs, and then the intestines would continue until the end, which would be the anus where the uh, formed feces would be removed.